more can I say? Top billing. Top billing. Listen, I know what they're going to say. Oh, it's just the Giants, Cletus. You should have smoked them and all that. Listen, ain't nobody taking my sunshine, right, on this Christmas day. As a matter of fact, Merry Christmas to all my people out there in South Jersey. We in the building, baby. Shout out to everybody in Philly. Shout out to the entire Delaware. Elton, Maryland, stand up, baby. We back in the win column. Sometimes that's all it takes, man. You just need to see the ball go through the hoop. You know what I mean? It's like any of you cats out there are hoopers. You know what I mean? Like your boy right here. You know what I'm saying? Big hoop in the back of the day. But look, you know what I'm saying? If your stroke ain't there right, pause, gotta pause that. You know what I mean? And get, you're not getting buckets and all that, man. Sometimes all it takes, it could be a layup. And then it could be a, a, a free throw. Then it could be, I don't know, you know what I'm saying? A, a step back or something like that. Then you hit a corner three. You just never know. You have to just keep stacking it. And stacking it. Get better at the little things, man. Some of the stuff that I saw in this game, right, I like the creativity uh, pretty much on, on both sides of the ball, right? You know, people going to poo-poo on the offense, but, hey, the, the results are in the pudding there. I'm a huge fan of Wink Martindale. That's my guy. That's my favorite defensive coordinator. If anybody knows, I'm a Rex Ryan stan, and he is the third Ryan brother, right? He is Buddy Ryan's third son. And that man plays just, you can tell he came up under uh, Rex and Rob Ryan uh, with those crazy ass blitzes and all that shit like that. These guys are going to give you a ton of pressure coming off the bus, right? So it's a little bit different than um, like a team like the Seattle Seahawks last week there. So uh, being able to see different styles of defenses, seeing how you're going to work against that. And, and conversely, right? Let's be real here. The Giants have one of the worst, if not the worst, offenses in the NFL. Probably not going to learn much from those guys that way, but somehow they still managed to put up like 25 points, right? I know it was off of a short field. Uh, you had a terrible blunder, right, with the turnover um, coming off with the kickoff uh, with my man Alameda Zacchaeus running into Boston Scott. You had a pick six. Wasn't Jalen Hurts' fault? I know every, listen, that's my quarterback. Forever, you know what I mean? I ride with Jalen Hurts since way before any of you probably knew who he was, right? I was up there sticking for, up for this man. He was a freshman when I was covering him at the University of Alabama. That's my guy right there. He will pull through in the end, and uh, he made some very good plays this game right here. But um, that pick six obviously wasn't his fault there. If Dallas Goddard doesn't lose his feet, at the very least, it's a uh, he probably catches the ball. Maybe it's broken up by Dory Jackson, but it's certainly not a pick six right there. So that's 14 points. But then you get a pretty dumbass call to me, right? Um, matter of fact, we can go into some of that right there. Matter of fact, I want to talk about this, though, right here. This shit was cold, Slim. What are we doing here? Listen, um, you don't have uh, that man heating you up, Rick Martindale, right? They're playing coverage across the board, but... Jalen Hurts, my God, look at this. On the pool right here, coverage across the board. They got it laid out here. Look at that, lay it out. Coverage across the board. You get Dexter Lawrence right here, a freak of freaks right here, barreling down on you. He sidesteps that, detaches, right? Climbs the pocket right here, right? Shooting off the front foot. Shooting off the front foot right here in Jocker. My God, layered it over Isaiah Simmons. <laughs> what? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Throwing off the front foot right here, able to layer it over Isaiah Simmons, who has severe athleticism, hops, and everything. You know the type of um, you know the type of clutch you have to feather with this, right? You, know what I'm you gotta feather the clutch with this bad boy, layer it like that. Take a little bit off of it while being accurate. Look at the product placement to my man A.J. Brown right there. Let's see it a little bit closer. Come on. This shit right here was cold. Got some Jordans on. I need this poster right here. Somebody make me a poster of this right here. Throwing off the front foot. And look at it. Layers shooting through the air right there. Come on, man. Isaiah Simmons up for the downstroke. Can't get it. Right between the ones right there. 
Jalen Hurts, baby. What are we doing here? Master the little things. Just get better. One game at a time. That's all I want to see. I don't want to even think about the playoffs right now because we got a couple of more games there. I want to get better each game, and then we'll see what happens in the playoffs. They have to play us, too. Remember, there's a whole bunch of superstar players that are on the field for the Philadelphia Eagles. Now, if you know you're shooting the back to the flat here, the way this is set up there, you know it's probably going to be man covered. So, Who's going to get the back out of the backfield? If you know you got somebody right here occupying more than likely his identifier, the the Mike Backer here or Kerry K, where is he going to go? Is he going to go with the tight end right here in the slot? Is he going to go with, with Dallas Goddard in the slot here? Or is he going to run with the back out of the backfield? If he runs with the back out of the backfield, you shoot it real quick. You make these quick decisions, right? Take it what the defense gives you. That's what I want to see Jalen Hurts do. And to me, he did a little bit better with that in this particular game right here. We see it right there. What did he do? He occupied Goddard, right? I want to say that's Goddard. Yeah, it looks like he occupied Goddard. So Goddard shot it to the inside right here. He's st sticking with Goddard, right? So that means nobody's on the back because you can see the cornerback right here dropping off with, with the receiver. Quick decisions there, right? Able to get it to where my man KG could move the chains right there. Quick decisions, taking what the defense gives you. Here we go. More quick hitters, more quick identifiers. If you have um, Okereke here, is he going to bite on the pistol play action right here, right? Working out a pistol, 12 personnel. Is he going to bite out of that and get out of that lane? So if he's able to get out of that lane right there, you come right behind him. You replace him. You see right here, A.J. Brown running right behind him. He follows Swift. Right? Swift could still get the ball out of the backfield and everything. If that's his assignment, you just make it that much easier to play ball right here. He floats with Swift and Yaka. Too easy. We just need more rhythm and timing plays like this. Everything does not have to be mid-range or deep. It doesn't, right? I, I said it when we first started this season right here. It's looking like they want to be too explosive, and people were playing them for the explosive play for the explosive pass, wanting to see if we can work the rhythm and timing element of our offense. And we have yet to really establish that this deep into the season right here. But stuff like this, man, being able to hit him hit that back foot and drop it in the bucket like that, come on, man, that's going to be playoff football. Anything can happen. I don't want to talk about that. I'm going to talk about the playoffs, man. We got to worry about what's in front of us. Um coming up here, so we'll, we'll get to that a little bit later. Run game was working on this one right here, and that was without Landon Dickinson. So what do you do? Still in that 12 personnel right here, running that inside zone. Look at the layering of that right there. That's absolutely perfect. Everyone moving in concert, stepping front side right there, from Lane Johns to the Cam Jurgens to Jason Kelsey to Opeta, to your man, yeah, to my lotta right there. And then, of course, you got Stoll and then Calcaterra. Damn, that's crazy right there. No Dallas got it in on that one right there. And everybody pitch perfect, right? That's pitch perfect. Look, hat on a hat, hat on a hat, hat on a hat. Then it becomes just a one on one game. You find that organic crease like he does, get vert, and then the rest is history, as they say right there, right? Absolutely perfect. And this is against a very good Giants front, right? A very talented Giants front. I know there's some injuries there, but, man, you got Dexter Lawrence, the linebackers are dope, Kayvon Thibodeau, Kayvon, the Decepticon right there. Look at Kelsey angling off. Look at that right there. It's exactly what you need between him and Cam Jurgens right there. Absolutely perfect. Go ahead and get up, Phil. You can see him turning and angling. That's what it's about, man, getting those angles off from that Zone blocking right there. Run your Philadelphia Eagles ski. The walk the dog. This is one of the few things that I've seen that I know is out of Brian Johnson's playbook from your man Dan Mullen in that, what was that, 2020 Florida Gators superstar uh, offense that they had, right, when he was, he was there at the University of Florida, right? The walk the dog. My man coming with the rhythm stats right here just to lull him to sleep and work the slant. Come on. When you get that type of space and that's all you have to do. I saw some... Inside option routes, too, at the beginning of the game. This is a lot of the creativity that you get right here. 
You want to just kind of bluff this off right here? Oh, my man, he running, right? He got his old man stride on with it too, right? He looking like me out there, motherfucker, right? Running all, walking all stiff and upright and shit right there. Then he bog it down and look at that right there. Make a Dory Jackson have to tackle in space. Nobody else out there spin back, make him fertilize himself right there and sit it down. I love that play right there. That is definitely a Brian Johnson play. And don't give me that bullshit. I've been saying it all season. He's been running Nick Sirianni's offense. And I think Coach Sirianni has been calling the plays. He had the play sheet in his hand today, right? You see the drawing right here on the screen. Uh, I don't know what's going on with that, man. I wish they would have some clarification on that when he can just call his own plays. Take the bull by the horn, Coach Sirianni, and make sure that all the criticism or praise goes directly to you. Be a man about it. Be like Coach Reed. You know what I mean? Uh, Coach Reed's calling his own shit, developing his own his own his own offense and all that right there. The buck stopped with him. That's what I want to see Coach Siri do. That's just me though. Remember, this is just the quick after game joint right here. I just want to go over a few aspects. Obviously, I'll come back when the All-22 and we can really dig on certain aspects right here. But I'm talking about the creativity. Did you guys see this package on defense? Pause. Your man, Nolan Smith, right where I have suggested for the past five years, covering him at Georgia, off ball. You see, you see Hassan Reddick right here, my man, high, South Jersey's on there, Josh Sweat. You got your normal three down linebackers, and look who is the uh, dime linebacker. However you want to do, however you want to describe that, your man is right here off ball. And guess what you can do with that? With all three of those guys on the field, he can still blitz. He could be the green dog guy, which I believe he may have been in this particular play, right? Uh, meaning, if there's no assignment for him, he can shoot a gap. Uh, he can. St- you, you can put him up, mug the A-gap, have him blitz from an A-gap. He can drop back in coverage. He can use his athleticism, right? So this was inconsequential right here. I don't think he did anything but sink back. But, uh, man, you can see him right there. Like, he looked natural, man. Look natural. My man can sit there and get sideline to sideline and all that. Nolan Smith, right? Look at it from this angle right here. Nolan Smith off ball. Got Reed Blankenship, right, coming through the C-gap there. Oh, that's tough on Josh Sweat taking an inside approach right there. Probably knocked Reed off. Look at that. Knocked them both off right there. Um, but you can see uh, your man getting depth right here. Trying to take away the shallow zone. So, there you got it, man. And I've seen it quite a few times. And obviously, he still played on the edge as well. But why not get him more snaps in that manner? Um, by having him fill in in a spot, of course, that we're very thin at. Why not? Why not? Thank you, man. Thank you. All right, so just like you guys are going to get on Coach Desai, you got to get on Coach Patricia as well. This is a dumb call. Now, you have two receivers stacked here. You have your nickelback, Brad Roby, right here. You have your outside corner, Keely Ringo, right? They're going to be working zone, right? My man's zone here. He's working zone vertical. But guess what? <laughs> They're smart. What they do is they run this bad boy right here, have Keely Ringo occupied here just to be able to isolate on a damn fade route, Reed Blankenship against Darius Slayton. I used to cover the Giants. I don't know if you guys know that. I covered the Giants uh, in multiple mediums. I covered them. Uh, way back in the day when I first started my career in SB Nation for a little bit. And then I covered it here on the channel, um, mostly off-season type stuff right there. I've covered pretty much everybody in the Mid-Atlantic, right? This right here, my man Darius Slayton, right, absolutely can run. That's what he does. Anytime you can get him matched up on a safety, I don't care if it's Kevin Byatt, I don't care if it's Sidney Brown, he's done, Right? That safety is done. This is a dumb call to go zone right here, in my opinion. This should have been an automatic switch the man to get Reed Blankenship to where he's not the one covering one-on-one. Look at him occupied. You only have this man end up covering the back out of the backfield, and he's your nickel back. Levels concept right here. Reed Blankenship unprepared. His feet is all tied together, hog tied. He's hog tied, and he has zero foot energy right here. Come on, man. Instant 
social distancing measures being practiced. That's that early pandemic separation. I'm not sure what Reed Blankenship was doing. I don't know if he thought the ball wasn't coming to him. I'm not sure if he misjudged Darius Slayton's speed. You can't do that. That dude can run. He's one of the best deep ball getters in the NFL, in my opinion, and it's been that way for, for a long time right there. We don't even got to continue on that. Listen, got to get better at certain aspects of, of, of the defensive play calling right there. Have to be able to identify when stuff is. They needed to switch up out of that zone, man, because that was the worst thing that you could have happened. Any of the safeties isolated on Darius Slayton getting vert. Nasty, absolutely nasty. But listen, like I said before, man, a win is a win. I'm not going to sit here and cry about anything dealing with a win. I wanted to see that damn win number change from a 10 to an 11. It's been sitting at 10 for a few weeks. Now it's at 11. Uh, continue to stack it to 12, then to, then the 13 on into the playoffs. All right. So let me know, man. There's certain aspects on the game I know you guys want to talk about. We'll talk about them, and um, I'll come back with some more there. But hey. Win is a win, baby. Shout outs to everybody out there. Philadelphia Eagles back in the win column. I know you motherfuckers gonna come up in here and poo pooing on some shit like some cry babies, like you always do, and all this and that. I ain't trying to hear that bullshit like Spike Lee. All right? Win is a win. Continue to stack, get better from there. Hey, listen, you had the Kansas City Chiefs wish they would have won, right? They ain't win. The Dallas Cowgirls talking all that shit all up on my channel for the past however many weeks. Going out like Willie Lump Lump as well. I told them they would lose to the Bills and the Dolphins, and they lost to the Bills and the Dolphins. As a matter of fact, everybody told me that we would lose to the New York Giants. Wasn't pretty, but we beat the New York Giants, and there you have it there. So continue to press on. I salute to everybody out there once again, man. Merry Christmas. Thanks for everybody out there for the support, man. Make sure you tip your waiter, man. You, you know your boy's the only one bringing that hibachi, man. These other guys out there faking the funk, doing a little goofy rumor type shit. I salute. What more can I say? Top billing. Top billing.